Hey guys, welcome to my review for the Dress Rosa arc in One Piece. Yes, I'm finally done. I'm sorry this video took me so long to get out. It's just I've been busy reading other stuff and doing stuff with the school and all this crazy stuff happening. But now I'm finally here to talk about Dress Rosa, one of the longest arcs in One Piece. And even though it's only like 10 volumes, you know, most of the arcs in One Piece are only like 5 or 6. And my god, was this arc crazy now. First off, if you're new to my videos, my story arc reviews are full of spoilers. Like, I just spoil the whole thing. So if you have not finished the Dressrosa arc in One Piece, please leave this video because there is a lot to spoil. So after forming an alliance, uh, Trafalgar Law and the Straw Hats all head off to Dressrosa to shut down Doflamingo's smile factories because he is selling devil fruits to Kaido, one of the four emperors of the sea who is doing a bunch of evil stuff that they want to stop. However, while some of these Straw Hats go off to Dressrosa, uh, some some of them actually go off to another island, Zo. And the plan was once the guys are finished at Dressrosa, they would head off to Zo and join them. So what's interesting about this arc is that like half of the Straw Hats are barely even in it. For about 10 volumes, we don't see Sanji, Nami, Chopper, or Brook. Now this was a bit of a risky move for Oda because we're just saying goodbye to a bunch of these beloved characters that like everyone friggin loves. So his challenge was to introduce some really, really awesome characters to make up for the lack of four Straw Hats in this arc. And oh boy, did he ever deliver. So I'm not gonna lie, when this arc first started, it took me a while to really get into it. You know, the first couple volumes, uh, Luffy was doing this whole tournament thing to try to get Ace's Devil Fruit, and we get introduced to this race of little people known as the Tontadas, and uh, I really didn't care about them at first, I found the way they spoke a bit annoying, and I just didn't really like them all that much, but I freaking grew to love these guys. But I'll elaborate more on that in a second. Um, so the first point of this arc, when I knew things were about to go insane, was of course, when Sabo returns. Now, unfortunately, this was the only thing, the only major plot point in One Piece that has ever been spoiled for me. I don't know, like, how. I mean, I managed to avoid spoilers like Ace's death and Whitebeard's death, so I managed to avoid all that crazy stuff, but a couple of months ago, Crunchyroll posted a friggin' Facebook ad for this Sabo special they were doing in the anime, and I was like, oh, Sabo comes back. Huh. Although despite knowing that Sabo would eventually return, his return was frigging amazing. Like, Luffy's face basically represented every single fan of One Piece reading this chapter. At the end of this arc, we actually learn what happened to Sabo after he seemingly got blown to bits, and it turns out that Luffy's father, Monkey D. Dragon, actually rescued him. And he took him in to the Revolutionary Army, but the problem is that Sabo got amnesia. He couldn't remember anything except for the fact that he really didn't want to go back to his parents. So he ended up growing up with the Revolutionary Army and he became rank number two. That, that's a pretty high rank. Jesus, Sabo, you're awesome. But when the Paramount War ended and news broke out that Ace died once Sabo sees this in the newspaper, all of his memories come back and he's like, oh my god. My brother just died. And honestly, this scene was just like super, super sad. So he comes to Dress Rosa and he's like, Luffy, you know, you got some more important things to do. I will go get Ace's Devil Fruit. And he does. He friggin' wins the tournament disguised as Luffy. And he eats the Devil Fruit. He gets Ace's powers. Like that, that was so amazing. He also has an awesome fight with Fujitor. And the Fujitor is the new admiral who uh, replaced Aokiji. And man, I really like Fujitor. The other two admirals, I think they are complete assholes, especially Akainu. Uh, but this guy, you know, he wasn't that bad. Because, I mean, I know he's a Navy admiral, so he's, he's technically an antagonist. But in this arc, he was like, you know what? The real threat is Doflamingo. I'm gonna let the Straw Hats and their allies do whatever, I'm gonna stay out of this. So yes, the real villain of this arc was Doflamingo, and my god, he has to be like one of if not the most evil characters in One Piece so far. This guy was just insane. For 10 years, he's been ruling over Dressrosa. He got all of his goons working for him. We got this one Sugar, who's friggin' turning people into toys to work in slave labor camps. And once she turns someone into a toy, everyone who ever knew them forgets about them. Which is... Insane. It is like horrible. We got this one dude, the toy soldier. 
He is Rebecca's father. Now, Rebecca was a new warrior character introduced in this arc, and I, man, she was all right. I feel like Oda was maybe trying to build up Rebecca as the next Vivi, but it didn't really work out because I didn't care for her as much as I think I should have. But the story with her and her father was still really, really good. I loved a bunch of the new uh, pirate characters that were introduced in this arc. We have Cavendish and Bartolomeo, who is crazy. He's like the biggest One Piece fanboy ever. You know, like all those crazy One Piece fanboys on the internet talking about how it's like the greatest manga in existence and whatever. That's basically Bartolomeo. And I love how like half of this arc is pretty much the climax of just the Straw Hats and all of their allies, all of the freed toys after they defeat Sugar, all, all of them just charging up the mountain to Doflamingo's palace to just take everyone down. It was so, so awesome. Like, the climax of this arc, I haven't really talked about like the true climax yet, but the climax of this arc has to be one of the greatest moments in One Piece. Now, we also get to learn a lot more about Trafalgar Law, and he honestly has to be one of my favorite characters now, which is crazy, because when we were first introduced with him, he was like a really minor character, and now he is one of the most important characters, and my god, we get his backstory. Trafalgar Law's backstory, in my opinion, is the saddest backstory in the entire series so far. I mean, there have been so many horrible, tragic backstories. Uh, you know, Robins, pr pretty much all of these Straw Hats have had really horrible childhoods. But I mean, Laws, his parents die. His friggin' little sister dies. All the other orphans die. Like, his whole city gets burned to the ground. He gets this disease. He has only, like, three years or so left to live. And then Doflamingo's brother Corazon, he takes him away from the Doflamingo family looking for a cure for his disease, only to later be killed by Doflamingo right in front of Law. Like, I, I, I have no words for this. It was also really scary reading this arc because there were a lot of times where I really thought that Trafalgar Law was about to die, but luckily, Luffy came to the rescue. Gear forth. Luffy goes gear four. Now this was very surprising for me, even though it made a lot of sense for Luffy to unlock a new form, because how else was he going to defeat Doflamingo, especially with that birdcage thing? Oh my god, that was intense. The birdcage just coming over, just Rosa crushing everyone off. Oh. Anyway, he goes gear fourth, and he beats the living crap out of Doflamingo. It was so amazing to see Doflamingo get beat up, because that guy really freaking deserved it. Easily one of the best fights in the entire series. But while that's happening, you know, there's a lot of other other stuff going on. Usopp unlocks his hockey, which is crazy, because I mean Usopp used to be like one of the weakest straw hats and now he can use hockey. Frankie ends up destroying the Smile Factory, which is awesome with the help from the Tontadas who I, I love them after. Like, it took a while, but I started to really love these guys. I mean, they're just so cute, and they're adorable, and their determination is crazy, and they're a lot more powerful than they lead on. And I just loved how all the warriors in the entire island were coming together. Even Fujitora were trying to stop the birdcage from getting any closer, and that was just amazing. So Doflamingo gets defeated after a very long arc, very amazing arc. And then, of course, we get that amazing transitional period that we always get where a bunch of stuff gets revealed. So, like I said, we get Sabo's backstory, then he leaves because, you know, he has other things to do, but he leaves Luffy with his Viva card. And I was thinking to myself, you know, it's been a very long time since we've gotten a new member of the Straw Hats. And I was thinking to myself, I'm like, you know, maybe it will be Bartolomeo because he loves them so much. Maybe he will come up to them at the end and he will wish to join, but he's the captain of his own crew so that wouldn't really work out. Pretty much all of their allies come to them at the end of this arc, wishing to join them. And Luffy's like, uh, no, not really, that's too many people. And they're like, whatever, we don't care, we are joining you. So then pretty much everyone, all of these pirate captains and their crews, join these Straw Hats as one big fleet. And they're not going to be with them all the time, they all just got Viva cards, they're going to go off, and they're basically allies now. Luffy has this crazy armada of ships that he can just call in at any time. Now this was absolutely insane. I did not see this coming at all. And stuff like this just makes the series so, so freaking good. I love it so much. Oda also does a troll. He's like, yeah, there's something really big gonna happen eventually, but we're not gonna talk about it. Let's go to the next arc. But before we go to the next arc, we get to see our very first glimpse of Kaido. We see him jump off friggin' Skypea into the ground trying to kill himself, because it seems like this guy really wants to die, but he is seemingly indestructible. So I imagine when they finally do fight this guy, it will be a very interesting battle. So, 
Those were my thoughts on Dress Rosa. One of my favorite arcs. Honestly, it just with how good it was, easily the best part of New World, one of the best parts in the series, and I just cannot wait to continue reading in the Zoe arc. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.